spot this tank top. But what is this? And how do I fix it? I'll show you. Coming up. So every spring, I'm on the search for the perfect tank tops. Because I love to wear just all my skirt designs with a simple tank top. I'm usually good for navy, number one black, navy, and then I even found olive this year because I have a skirt that I wanted to go with. But it's usually just always black tops. So I found this tank top and I love it. It actually has elastic little on the side right here. It's long, it's like too long. So I literally have to, I think it was like 20 bucks a piece. Um, I bought four black and uh, a couple navies and I'm having to alter all of them. And if I had to take them somewhere to alter them, they'd probably cost me $20 a piece easy just to fix them. But um, this, so I had, I got like a, an extra large or a 1X because I had to fit my bust, but the rest of it's just too big. I mean, look at, this is wild. This is really big. So you don't just take in the sides here. There's a little alteration that you do that makes it fit really good. So I already did it to one of them and it came out great. Um, and then the side, I'm gonna chop this off three inches. And then when I, I did the first one, I chopped out three inches and it had like a, it peaked out like that. I'm like, oh, I can't wear that. So um, so the next one I, did, I actually took it in, but then I didn't take it in the, like the, the really correct way. So uh, it has that little edge on the side. It's kind of a little bumpy, but it turned out fine. Um, so now I'm gonna um, take in the sides, then cut it off. And then this side right here, I wanna show you um, a really good way to get this out of here. So it kind of like needs a dart right there, but what you can do is do a, just the front part. And a lot of people don't know about that. So um, sometimes you, the front part of something's bigger than the back, so you gotta take in the front only, which means you have to separate the side seams. You can't just take in the side seams evenly. So I'm gonna show you how to fix it in case you have a problem with that yourself. So here we go. All right, the first thing I wanna do is mark um, just on the front. So I have my front out, and this one is pretty big. Uh, usually it's only about an inch, but this one is literally uh, inch and a half from knowing that from my last one and uh, so I'm going to mark an inch and a half right on the side there and then I'm going to blend this into the side seam up here so it just you have to just have it a nice subtle blend and then you have to take out the seam most alterations people what they'll do is just take the side seam in and go this way but then it doesn't really just get, I just want to get rid of this gap, like the back of this fits really fine. Um, that just kind of is how you can get rid of that um, bust gap. So it just kind of works on knits. And usually an inch and a half is a little much, but it, I did do one and it really worked out good. This, this one's really tight. I actually just ripped apart one of the other ones. But <laughs> now this is just the overlock stitch and it can come out. Um, this one's actually, it has a four, this has the four threads. Sometimes it's three, which is easier. You just have to um, get a sharp, um, newer seam ripper. I actually put the red tape on the newer ones I have and just really just, you know, take your time with it. It, it goes faster than you think and I just cut out a couple threads and pop them out and then I pull. Just be careful not to cut the back. The front, um, <laughs> it's got a little hole in the front. Um, it's gonna get sucked into that. So just take all that out until you get to this point here. And then I already have this one ready. Um, so I have this separated here. What I'm gonna do is turn it uh, inside out, as they call it. And then, I, so I have, that's my front. And then I'm gonna line up, get all these little thread hairs out of here and line up this one, or the right at the top, right there, and then just kind of work it in there. And then I'm actually not going to sew right on the old 
line here because it might have little stress points there, but just a little bit past. And then I put pins in the direction I'm going to pull, and then I make sure I'm right on the line there. And then you just simply sew from here. So I'm actually going to start right here with some of the existing stitches and just sew it right along where those pins are. And then it takes it right in, and then you can just um, overlock it closed, and then um, you'll have it just fit right in there. It's pretty nice. And then what you want to do is cut it out and then just stitch it to there. I'll show you that part too. So I have that part there, and then I have to hem this, and I'll give you a couple little techniques on hemming um, a knit top. So I want to chop this off three inches, so I marked it three inches um, from the bottom on both sides, and then I um, mark the I went three quarter inch down because I looked at theirs, it's three quarters. Um, so you can do three quarters or an inch. And the whole trick in, just make sure this is straight because then I'm going to cut it through double layer. It's a little bit easier with that right here. The whole trick with hemming a knit on a just a home machine is comes from the iron. So you gotta press it first, and then I'm gonna keep this piece here to practice on, because it's like, it's always whatever happens, you just have to practice every time. Um, I'm just gonna press this and then practice on my machine, get my machine used to this fabric, make sure I have the right needle in it, and all that. Um, so I'm just gonna cut that. Now I'm gonna turn it back inside out. This is where this had this little peak right here, and you can see it there so um, I'm just going to keep that elastic there and um, from what I remember it went about just kind of estimate you just want it to go straight straight down like that what do I have here I'm going to measure it um, from this side here I'm going to go it's five eighths let's actually just get it I'll come from that elastic part here just or actually just right in there and then I'll measure that five eighths so I'm going to stitch this first then I'll, I'll go in and hem it. This, yeah, those are gonna come together. And then the other side. It's crazy how, I don't know how they had this pattern. I don't know if it came from the elastic, but it just, when I tried the first one, it was like, really did not look good. So doing on the same on both sides. Just get that little peek out. I'm gonna go stitch that, and then I'm gonna finish this one up and stitch this right here and then um, this one's going a lot faster it's always the first ones you do that take a while so now I know what to do it goes faster All right I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine first I'm gonna move it to a stretch stitch and uh, sometimes actually it's hard to, I think I'm gonna move it stretched after I get over this hump right here <laughs> and I'm gonna move this to zero so my needle goes right there just get it started. Go reverse. Sometimes getting started on these bumpy ones is the hardest part. Right there, get it going. Okay. Smooth. Now I'm going to put it onto a stretch stitch. And then stitch it right close to the groove there. Never used a stretch stitch before. You got to make sure you are never going to take it out <laughs> because what it does is goes front back, front back, and it really reinforces the stitch as it's going. If you don't have a stretch stitch, you can actually just sew right over it, and it's always good just to make sure it fits first. You could also baste things first. And then if it's really good, then go ahead and stretch stitch over it. But this fabric has lots of stretch in it, so it really needs it. Otherwise, the thread will crack. Okay, so I'm going to take it right into this stitch here. Try to avoid the elastic. There we go. I don't really even need to reverse it because it's reversing as it's going. Okay, there's that. So I 
have that stitch there. And then it looks like that. So I got it where you can see the faint chalk mark there. Got it right in there. It blends right there. So it's pretty simple. All right, that side's done. Okay, now I'm going to sew this little side here and don't need the tag. There we go. This is just a quick um, stitch down here. Using a stretch stitch so I don't have to reverse it. Get that little peek out of there. all this so I'm going to trim the little peaks off and I trimmed off that little part here and then you just have to press um, that towards the back just do a little press I'm not going to uh, overlock it there I don't know I wonder if I should <laughs> just kind of get a nice press and when pressing knits you want to kind of let it cool that and then I'll just go over and just sew put a little you can do a little hand stitch there or just sew it down on the machine and that just keeps that from flying or you know kind of flopping around there just sew it on the back side right there just like it was whenever you're doing alterations trying to look at how it was when you took it apart so then I have um, this part and the trick with hemming these bottom parts is the machine stitch you use. Actually, I always like the seam to go towards the back. So I'm going to do, actually in this case, I could probably open it up, which actually will give a nice, better finish. And I'm going to press it right on the chalk marks I have there. Like that. I'm going to let it cool. Like that trick is letting it cool. And then the pressing, if you've got a nice strong crease here, the machine will just sew right along here. And then you'll get a nice um, cover stitch looking stitch. But the trick is to press it first. So I'm just going to press put that back on my thing. Go ahead and press this whole thing. And I'll show you the stitch I'm going to use. Okay, first thing I need to do is try the sample. So number 27 is my honeycomb stitch. I don't know if I have the right presser foot on here. Check it. <laughs> my students move my presser foot around. Let me try it. My break. It's not. Okay. So now. Right here first. What I'm looking for here is um, I'm going to make sure my presser foot is um, going alongside. Looks like I have like about a quarter inch past there. And I'm just going to let it go. Might make the stitch a little longer. So basically, it's a honeycomb stretch stitch. with that one. Although it seems like a lot of thread. Was there another one I used? Hmm. It's got to be a stretch stitch. 27. I, oh, I used it on my other machine. Yeah, I might. Well, this is pretty nice. I'm just what I'm worried about sometimes when there's so many threads. When you go all the way around, it crunches up with the thread. I got good quality thread in here though. If I made it a little bit longer, it would only go to four. Shall I do it? Hmm. Maybe I will. I'm gonna go for it. Okay, here we go. So far, so good. Sometimes when you have a long way to go, it uh, 
bread gets. Make sure you have enough bobbin too. <laughs> take a while I'll show it to you when it's done okay stitches done it came out good wow those stretch stitches take a little bit of time to do but they turn out good and then your your knit can stretch and when you put it on it doesn't doesn't crack so I just uh, trimmed had to trim a little bit of the excess off on the hem and then my side seam looks really great and I locked down the stitch here so that it um, doesn't flop around there. And then I didn't even overlock the under part here. So uh, it's done and ready to wear. Ta-da! Done with my tank top. Feels so much better. Oh, got it shorter. And now I can wear it. But now I have to do the black ones and my olive one. Olive one is next up because this one is going to go with the skirt that I'm still making. This is the fabric. Oh, I call it a city skirt because it has like a city scene on it and it has this olive in it that goes with pink. So I can't wear black with this one. So I'm so glad I have sewing skills. I can just look at something and go, where is it going to go and take it in. And the first one I didn't do so good on, but the, all the other ones, all the other 10 of them that I bought, <laughs> going to alter them all. And, uh, have my wardrobe for the summer. Ta-da! So if you found this video valuable, give me a thumbs up and go look in your closet. See what just needs a little hem, you know? Use the stretch stitches on the on your machine, on your knits, and uh shorten some things. Maybe they're just, you know, put it on. What's wrong with this? Hmm. Fix it. <laughs> what the heck? You'll feel so much better. Anyway, I'll see you in the next so bit. <laughs>